Okay, good evening everybody. Welcome to all of you at the ACCA practice pass session of paper F7 that is financial reporting and today as we have discussed in the last session that we have to cover some of the topics relating to the disposal of subsidiary relating to the consolidation. I hope my previous lecture of day three has uh, input some values in you in terms of the concepts of consolidation and uh, I have received some emails from the students who have attempted the question pace maker and hostel link some are struggling in the question but uh, I will reply, uh, reply you because of some hectic schedule uh, I have emails uh, the constructive response and the answers to some of the students but uh, I will surely inshallah by the uh, end of Ma Monday I will reply uh, you all uh, about the constructive feedback and your answer script so it is very important for all of you to do the lot of practice but the practice should be for the limited questions do not do over practice of a particular topic you have to focus on 100% slavers and you have to cover the 100% slavers so today is day 4 we will try to cover ratios inshallah today and we will try to cover the earnings per share EPS topic because most of the students uh, wanted me to do EPS today so that's why I have selected EPS topic and finally uh, for, for the cash flow topic uh, I have already told in the last session that uh, I will share the video of the cash flow on uh, on my whatsapp group so all of you are required to just join the whatsapp group so that I can give you the cash flow related video on the group uh how please help how to define the limited practice okay uh, limited type practice means like uh, i am giving you five questions i have already given you five questions for the final account so do till the exam date only five questions of the final account and do repeatedly uh, you are not required to prepare income statement balance sheet all the time but you are you have to practice the question at least solve uh, at least one or two question and do the adjustments at least for five the five questions which I have recommended to you then just review the exam kit if you see a particular uh, adjustment in the final account question that you have not yet attempted so do attempt at least one or two adjustment from that question but till the exam date you have to do only five questions which I have I, I am recommending you I have recommended you in the final accounts similarly you have to do only four to five selected consolidation questions and you have to do two or three cash flow questions and you have to do at least three to four consolidated related questions so this this is the meaning of limited practice and uh, you have to do uh, a lot of you have to do a lot of uh, MCQs and OTQs but the question should be relevant relevant means focus on the past papers and Kaplan and BPP exam kit do not try to uh, solve irrelevant questions uh, like you can find different websites in, in which way you have uh, you will find MCQs on different IFRCs but uh, these are not relevant for you so the relevant portion is you can found in Kaplan and BBP kit I think it has uh, sufficient questions to do the practice for section A and B and some uh, questions are available in the past papers okay uh, how to select okay uh, please do mail me so that it will be helpful for the cash flow Uh, 
is defined for practice uh, I do not recommend any platform to do the practice because uh, the the quality of the question is very important so it might be possible that some uh, different platforms can uh, disturb your concepts so I think go for the uh, content which is registered with the ACCA so that is my recommendation so let's add the today's slide that is the format of the exam this is the passing ratio this slide is very important for all of you that you have to focus on uh, you have to focus on the key concepts and do not take this paper as taken for granted because the passing ratio is just 51 percent so I miss your initial 10 minutes of yesterday's session can you please tell me if you discuss anything about the cash flow statement uh, I didn't discuss uh, till date anything about the cash flow I have just uh, discussed uh, this uh, point in the last session that I will share the cash flow related video on the whatsapp group so all of you are required to join the group and I will share the video of three hours and inshallah after that video you all will be hundred percent hundred percent perfect in the cash flow so let's start with today's presentation slides today uh, we have to cover the main, main major topic that we have to cover is the ratios so let's start from the first so disposal of subsidy is a topic that was left in the last session so I'm going to start from the topic disposal of subsidy so first of all I have to check I have to select the color okay how important the statement of cash flows topic is for the exam I think the importance of the cash flow uh, for question section C is least importance I think the most important topic is ratios then consolidation and final accounts so I don't think so good examiner can uh, is going to ask cash flow question but you have to prepare yourself for the hundred percent course so let's start from the disposal disposal of subsidy when the parent company has sold its shares in the subsidy company so there are some cases in which the parent company has lost its control and there are some com uh, situations in which the parent company has not lost the control but its percentage has decreased significantly like if I have previously I've got 90% shares and after the disposal of my shares I have now 70% shares so the subsidiary is still subsidiary but my shares or stake in the subsidiary has reduced so we have to calculate and uh, the, the detailed discussion of this disposal topic is actually related to SVR paper so you, you don't need to worry about the disposal cases so the most important thing is how to calculate the gain or loss on disposal so actually there are two types of gain one from the groups perspective and the second one is in the books of parent company so the parent company's gain can be calculated by comparing the cash received with the with the investment sold so this difference will be the gain on the disposal to the parent company like suppose we have investment in shares with a value of 500,000 and we have sold this 
at the current value which is 600,000 so there will be a gain on the disposal to the parent company is 100,000 so examiner can ask you the question that calculate the gain in terms of parent company or it could be the calculate the gain from the group's perspective but practically speaking this gain of the parent company is only calculated for the purpose of taxation so this information is not relevant to you but it's a practical knowledge now from the group's perspective so you have to first write the fair value of the cash received and sometimes company has sold some its shares parent company has sold some of its shares and retain some of the shares so the fair value of the investment retained so if the investment is still held after disposal in the subsidiary then it should be measured at its fair value so cash received plus fair value of the investment is retained less so these this portion will be deducted now you have to calculate the net assets of subsidiary at disposal so what is the value what is the total value of subsidiary at the time of disposal plus we have to calculate some unimpaired goodwill in it and finally the NCI figure should be deducted from here so this final answer should be deducted from here and we got the gain on disposal can we calculate the gain on this loss on associate gain on loss on associate yes we can also calculate the gain on loss on the disposal of the associate company but this is not uh, uh, covered in the scope of f7 how about the retain earnings if restated you have to take the retain earnings up to the date of disposal like when we are calculating the net assets you have to take share capital plus reserves so retain earnings is also the part of reserves so all the reserves should be up to the date of disposal so we have to add these two values we get the value of net assets so by adding net assets at the disposal plus unimpaired unimpaired goodwill means the goodwill which is left over after the impairment loss and finally we have to deduct the value of the total NCI so this should be the final amount which should be deducted from the consideration that we have received so the difference will be the gain or loss on disposal so if you have any question please do ask immediately so we have received some questions okay the first one is how about the retain earnings if okay if said uh, where will this gain be reported yes this question is very important this gain will be shown in the income statement or if it is a balance sheet question it should be added in the consolidated retain earnings so when you are preparing income statement you have to add this gain on the disposal in the income statement uh, before the in the profits before tax and if you are doing a balance sheet question it should be added in the retain earnings okay the second question is can we directly add NCI above 
uh, yes, you can add the saver, but I, I think it, it's good for you if you f just follow the formula. The fair value of the investment retained is the retained earnings. No, the fair value of the investment retained means the investment which the parent company still has after the disposal. This value of the investment and the current value of this investment is called the fair value of the investment retained. It's not retained earnings. This gain or loss go to the OCI? No. How to calculate the net assets? Net assets is calculated by adding the share capital of the subsidiary plus it's all reserves till the date of acquisition disposal. Net assets of the subsidy is equal to share capital plus retained earnings? No. Share capital plus reserves. So the reserves means uh, share, uh, share premium, revaluation reserve, retained earnings. And other reserves. Is there a goodwill on the associate? No, there is no goodwill on the associate. <coughs> when the retain earnings, uh, it's retain earnings or reserves. I have dis discussed this. Suppose the parent sold its significant investment in subsidiary, but there is a, a, a fair control power still, it will be considered a disposal of the subsidy. No. Actually, uh, you have asked a question relating to the SBR. It is actually the equity adjustment. So technically, it's not disposal because we have still control the subsidy. And but it is not a part of F7. So let's start the topic EPS. Uh, the disposal is only uh, about the formula. So we have three to four questions in the exam kit. So you can easily attempt the questions by just memorizing the formula. What if the subsidiary becomes a dispose and associate after the disposal? This question is again related to uh, SBR. So I don't want it to reply this question because there is a new Pandora box related to this question. So. Let's start the EPS topic. EPS means earnings per share. Earnings means profit attributable to ordinary shareholders. And the profit attributable to ordinary shareholder means profit after tax minus preference dividend. So after deducting the preference dividend, the whole of the prof whole the profit which is left over will be the profit for the ordinary shareholder actually. So this portion of the excess profit is technically called earnings. And the formula for the EPS is earnings per share. So you have to take ordinary shares. So if the EPS of the company is five, for suppose if the EPS of the company is five, or the EPS of the company is EPS of the company is um, three. So which company is better for the investment purpose? So from the earnings point of view. Uh, you can say this that this company is earning more as compared to this company. So there are some issues that is the reason that ISB has built a complete standard on this particular ratio because we have studied more than 20 ratios in the syllabus. But there is only one ratio in which there is a complete accounting standard that is IAS 33. So it is actually a very important standard. So the formula for the EPS is profit after tax minus preference dividend minus NCI in case if there is a uh, there is a profit or we are going to calculate the EPS of a group or you can say that we are calculating the EPS 
in a consolidated financial statement. So the formula will be this. For a single company, the formula is simply profit after tax minus business dividend divided by a weighted average ordinary shares. Weighted average ordinary shares means you have to take proportionate shares. Okay. So let's move on towards the first question. So this is the part and all of you are required to calculate the EPS. Oh, it's already calculated here. Earnings per share. They should Asia capital of the Saviour, a public limited company at 31st March 2003 was 10 million and its shares are denominated at 25 cents each. Saviour's earning attributable to its ordinary shareholder for 31st March were also 10 million. So the profit or earnings is 10 million. So what should be the value of the denominator? What should be the value of the denominator which gives the EPS of 25 cents? Yes, it should be 40 million. So this is how we have calculated the EPS of 25 cents. 0 0.25 dollars or 25 cents. Okay. So we are here at 31st March 2004. Then On 1st October, Saviour made a right issue of shares of two new ordinary shares at a price of one each for every five ordinary shares held. The offer was fully subscribed. The market price of the ordinary shares immediately prior to the offer was 2.4 each. Earnings attributable to the shareholders for the year ended 31st March 2005 were 19,000. 500 so ignoring these three zeros examiner has already calculated us and given the value of earnings to us that is 19500 all of you are required to just calculate the weighted average shares or the denominator for this portion Okay, how did we get 40? The, the question is from the student that how did we get 40? 40 million is being calculated here as there are 10 million dollars. So number of shares is calculated. It's a very simple question by dividing with the par value. So the power value of each share is mentioned here that is 25 cents each. We got the value of 40 million shares. How to calculate the weighted average? Are we not computing the adjusted factor before getting at the weighted average? So you have to calculate the EPS. I'm giving you one minute. After one minute, I will start a question.
Okay. And the area of the company is 31st March 20x5. So the start will be 1st April 20x4. And assuming at the start of the year we have 40 million shares. On 1st October 2004, Savio made a ride. So first of all, you have to calculate the date after which the company has issued the ride. So on 1st April, no, 1st May, April, May, June, July, August, September. So actually after the six months, company has issued the ride on 1st October. Issued a right of two new shares, two new, new shares for every five shares held. So the two new shares were issued at a discounted price of one. But the market price of each share is 2.4. So the price of two shares is two. And the price of five shares at 2.4 will be 12 so we have been given we have received seven shares at a value of 14 so the average value of each share is 2 so the technical name of this average value is Theoretical x right price. Theoretical x right price is called TERP. And then we have to calculate the bonus adjustment factor. So the bonus adjustment factor is the market value, which is 2.4 divided by 2. We got the value of 2.4 divided by 2. We got the value of 1.2 for bonus effect. <coughs> so for the first six months, if we have got 40 million shares into six months into bonus effect of 1.2, then for the last six months, we'll be having how much shares? So actually, company has issued. Uh, for every five sh shares, company has issued two right shares. So divide by five, multiply by two, it will be 56,000 for the last six months. So multiply by multiplying these two values, we got the EPS for 2005. 
that is 19,500 divided by what away with the value. So I think I have to calculate the amount. So 40,000 divided by 2, 40,000 multiplied by 6 divided by 12, multiplied by 1.2. So it will be 24,000 plus 56,000 into divided by 2. 28,000. So 20, 19,500 divided by 48, it will be 52,000. So the EPS should be 37.5 cents. Where did uh, 40 million comes? 40 million is actually we have taken from the previous data that is we have calculated here so this is the point from where we have, we got the value of 40 million what happens to the previous share price actually when the company has issued the right shares and right shares will cost uh, comparatively uh, less to the shareholders. So all the shareholders try to sell this these shares at a uh, at uh, on, uh, uh, for the for the purpose of profits. So that is the reason that when all the sellers comes in the market, there will be a slight decline in the market. So this value is calculated. You can uh, calculate the average value. So we can say that when the when all the uh, sh shareholders having the right come in the market and sell the price, then the end average price of each share will be approximately two. How will we find the bonus issue or right issue? Yes, it's it's mentioned here that the company issue right shares. So you have to do the working of right shares only. Okay, is that clear? Next is the issue of the bonus shares. If assuming company has 40 million shares at first April 2003 and it's wrong totally company has 40 million shares in first April 2003 and the air and is 31st March 2004 now this is the case of bonus issue you can see here on the screen then this is the case of bonus issue okay And from 1st April 31st March, the company has earned the profit of 13,800. So 13,800 is the earnings portion. And company has issued on 1st July, April, May, June. So after three months, company has issued 8 million further shares. 8 million means 8,000 shares at full market price full market price means it's a simple case in which you, uh, you are not required to do any sort of adjustments on first January 2004 a bonus issue of one bonus issue of one ordinary share for every four shares held was made so whenever you see a bonus you have to calculate the bonus return factor 
we just calculated at one plus one is the constant and one plus one new share for every four means one upon four so the bonus chain factor is 1.25 So whatever be the date of the bonus, the bonus hidden factor will should be applied on all the shares. So we have 40 million shares at the start till the end of the year. So we have to simply multiply it with the bonus hidden factor that is 1.25. And we have 8,000 shares issued on 1st January and the year end is 31st March. Then it means this shares was held only for January, February and March, three months. So it should be multiplied with three months, three by 12. Should be somewhere here at this stage. Sorry, it's not three months. 18,000 shares were issued on 1st July. July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. It should be nine months. Nine upon 12, multiply by bonus hidden factor of 1.25. So these are the calculations. I'm repeating here 40,000 into 1.25 plus 8,000 shares. First, we have to take the proportionate share into 1.25. So this should be the denominator. The EPS will be, and the EPS will be, please calculate the EPS. Thirteen thousand eight hundred divided by forty thousand into one point two five, and eight thousand into nine upon twelve. So, any one of you can help me to give the answer. Yes, the EPS is 24 cents. So I'm here for further one or two minutes. You have any issue, if you have any problem in bonus shares or right shares, you can ask it freely. So the bonus shares and the right shares, I have explained both the bonus and the right shares. So if you wanted to discuss anything, you can ask it immediately. Any question? Any question for the bonus or right shares? I'm lost. Can you please repeat the right shares? Okay, I, I, I will repeat the right shares first. If you have any question on the bonus shares. Uh, why does X right price Next right share value mean. First, please ask the question relating to bonus, then we'll discuss the right shares. Why we haven't calculated the bonus shares and then added in with it average shares. Uh, yes, you can do it. That's not the problem, but the most uh, easiest way is to solve the bonus case is here you can see on the screen there could be multiple ways to calculate the amount of weighted average shares but I'm telling you the shortest way to calculate the any question relating to bonus <coughs> okay I'm going back towards the right shares if you have any question about the right shares
why not 80,000 minus 40,000? 40,000 and 80,000 are totally different shares. And in fact, it's not 80,000, it's 8,000 shares. Secondly, they both have a different time period. Therefore, we have to take 9 upon 12 on 80,000 only and the 48,000 only. And the 40,000 will be considered 100% full amount. Therefore, we have multiply 8,000 into 9 upon 12 into BF and 40,000 directly BF without proportion it. Can you repeat the bonus one again? Bonus one again. Uh, if it is very difficult to repeat the whole concept again, but you can ask if you have any problem or you can view my video after the session. If the issue, the right issue of the shares in the middle of the year, hands we time portion the issue. No, it's it's all about uh, whenever we have issued uh, the right shares, it should be proportionate. Like sometime it could be six months, six months. It could be nine months, three months. It could be five months and seven months. What does X right share value mean? Theoretical X ride price is actually the average value which we are assuming after the issue of ride shares. Any other question? How 56,000 comes from we have calculated actually we what we have done is we have break the shares in two part so we have calculated the number of shares for the first six months initially by multiplying 40,000 into 6 upon 12 into 1 upon 2 now company has actually issued right shares of 2 for every 5 held so 40,000 into 40,000 into 2 upon 5 will be 16,000. So we have added these two values. So 40,000 plus 16,000. So in the last six months, we have 40,000 previous shares and 16,000 new right shares. So this is how we have calculated 56,000 for the last six months. how to calculate TERP. We have calculated TERP through the information given to us that company has issued two right shares for every shareholder who has got previously five shares. So if I have got five shares at a value at a market value of 2.4. So in the value of 12, we have five shares. But because of this five shares, we are going to receive two new right shares at a value of just one rupees. So it will cost us only two rupees. So we have paid actually 14 rupees and we will receive the shares with a quantity of seven. So the average value will be 14 divided by seven. So the two is the average price of each share. What about 4,000? Where is 4,000? There is no 4,000. Explain the concept of theoretical excite price fair value per share means why we need to calculate it. We have to calculate it because of the fact that shares will be trading, trading in the market after the right issue at this price approximately. Why we didn't multiply 56,000 to 6 upon 12 with the BF? BF is actually given to the shares. BF, yes. BF is already given to the shares which were before the, bon uh, before the right issue. So 40,000 is actually the reason that we have received the right shares. 
so the bonus component should be related to these shares rather than 56000 Uh, how to calculate 24,000? There is no 24,000 here. Okay, 24,000. 24,000 is here. 40,000 is 6 upon 12 to 1.2. Okay, the next important thing that you should know is that if in a current year, that is 2003 and 2004, company has issued and calculated the basic EPS, and the answer for the basic EPS is 11. And the previous year's EPS is 11.5. So according to IS33, you cannot compare these two EPSs if the company has issued bonus shares or right shares in the current year. So all you need to do is to restate, restate the last year's EPS. How we can restate the last year's EPS? You have to divide the previous year's EPS with the bonus adjustment factor. So the bonus adjustment factor could be for the bonus shares or it could be for the right shares. If the company has issued both, so you have to divide 115 by both so that you can calculate the comparable EPS for the previous year with the current year. Can you calculate why do we calculate the theoretical x right price share? There are a number of students who wanted to know why we are calculating x right share price. Actually, x right price is calculated because we have to calculate the bonus impact. So previously, the value of each share is 2.4. And after the right issue, the value will become 2. So there will be a right impact of 2.4. So this is the reason because the bonus adjustment factor in the right shares could be should be calculated by dividing the market value and average value. Okay. Now Another concept of EPS is the diluted EPS. The formula is same, but you have to add two new things. The first one is the notional savings the second one is notional shares. So when we add notional savings in the numerator and notional shares in the denominator, we got the value of diluted EPS. So diluted EPS means we are calculating the EPS on the assumption that when the potential ordinary shares will be converted into ordinary shares in the future, what will be the possible negative impact on the EPS? So being the financial reporting expert or financial accountant you should know this that EPS is calculated for the purpose of investment or for the benefit of the shareholders so when we calculate the EPS you have to tell the shareholder there are there are two possibilities that the EPS could be on the basic level it could be for example three or four but if the company dilutes the EPS, it could be one or two or three, whatever be the answer. So EPS dilutes actually because of some factors. So we are going to calculate the expected diluted EPS. Notional savings can be calculated as interest into one minus tax rate. And notional shares could be can calculated as maximum number of shares.
maximum number of shares means if the company has given you the option to convert your shares into 100 or 200 so the diluted EPS will be maximum diluted at 200 so you have to calculate the diluted EPS at 200 so all of you are required to calculate the diluted EPS in this scenario ignoring this portion ignoring this portion calculate the diluted EPS Okay, let's start. First of all, we have to calculate the basic EPS. On 1st April 2005, Savia issued 2 million convertible loan stock, the terms of the conversion, and blah, blah, blah. This information is irrelevant for us. Alternatively, the loan stock will be redeemed at par for the cash also on 1st April 2005. Tata and Savior were awarded the share options of 12 million. What are the shares? Uh, options for ordinary shares from first table 2004 at 1.5 per share. The average market value of uh, each share is 2.5. Income tax is 25. And Profit attributable is 25200. The total number of shares is assuming. Do we have the shares in this question? Mm. I think we do not have been given the shares. I'm giving you the information if it is 40,000. If it is 40,000, the basic EPS will be 25,200 divided by 40,000. 0.63? Okay. Now, we have been given diluted EPS. So, if I'm going to give uh, to solve with the convertible loan only. So, for convertible loan, the numerator will remain the same, the denominator will remain the same, but you have to add two things. The first thing in when the twenty thousand twenty thousand loan note will be converted its interest of 8% will be saved so 8% of 20,000 will be 1600 the tax impact will be 25% so 1 minus 0 0.25 so 75% of 1600 will be 1200 
So actually, twelve hundred will be saved. Will be saved when the company has issued. When the company has converted the convertible loan. So we are assuming that the company has converted the convertible loan at the start of the year. Then what will be the savings? The savings will be hundred into fifty. So twenty thousand divided by hundred multiplied by fifty. So this information is only relevant for the calculation of the shares, but do not assume that the company have to convert uh, before uh, in doing the basic EPS. So it is only used for the diluted EPS purpose. And it is an assumed calculation. That's why we have to say it's a nostal shares. So the nostal shares will be ten thousand. So you can see here that you can find the diluted EPS. Can you calculate it, please? It's zero point five two eight. So the EPS has now diluted from. 0.63 to 0.528. So this is how we have calculated the diluted EPS with the basic EPS. Now I am going to incorporate. Any question? So where we calculate 1600? 1600 is calculated as 20,000 into 5 percent, 8 percent. 20,000 into 8 percent is the interest of this convertible loan. Even you can see from this point initial, and where we calculate one thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand is calculated here. Twenty million loan notes, and each loan note can be converted into five hundred shares, fifty shares. Now the basic EPS, assuming is twenty-five thousand two hundred divided by forty thousand, the basic EPS is zero point six three. Now, if the examiner has given you the share options, so you will get share options. So the nostal savings for the share options will be zero. And nostal shares will be total shares, free shares. Sorry, free shares. Then how to calculate the free shares? So in calculating the diluted EPS, you should know this: twenty-five thousand two hundred will remain the same, plus nostal savings is nil. And in the denominator, there must be a free shares. Now, how we calculate the free shares? The director of the CBR awarded shares options to 12 million shareholders uh, shares exercisable from 1st April at a value of 1.5. So, in a payment of 1.5, 1.5 into 12 means. In a payment of 18 million dollars, you will receive a 12 million shares, and the market value of each share is the market value of each share is uh, I think 2.5. Yes, 2.5. So, so if I go with the 18 million and purchase the share at the market value. At 2.5, we got the value of 7,200. So 12,000 is the value of the share that we have received, and at market value, I should receive 7,200. So there are certain shares which is free for the company. 
so the amount will be 4800 so this is how we have calculated the diluted EPS scenario So now you have a question for the answer purpose. I'm giving you as one minute to solve it, please. Yes, it's C. All four. Oh my God. There are some students who I think didn't understand and read the question carefully. You can see here that I have the question say that which of 